Hi, this is part three of how to play Sudoku. And if you've watched part one and two, we've been doing the same puzzle. We talked about the basic strategies um, in part one of how to look at a number and try to figure out where the rest of the numbers would go in a basic way. And then now we're in part, in part two, we got into pencil marks. And we were able to fill in quite a bit of the board. In this part, part three, we're we're at the place where there's no obvious help we can get just by going through each number and looking. As you can see, we, we can click on one. The pink shows us all the pencil marks of one. There's no obvious places. And we've gone through and we've determined that we're sort of out of the obvious. So now in this part three, we're going to move on to more complex strategies. Now usually you can get a lot of uh, clues by doing what we did in part one and two. But now that you get to the part where it's not so obvious anymore, where you, there isn't just a single number in a uh, row, column, or box, you need to move on to other strategies. And the, one of the other strategies we're going to move on to, we can do, is something called uh, where you're looking for two matching sets. What I mean by two matching sets is this right here. In this column of nine, we see a one and a nine and below it a 1 and a 9. So we look at this box and we say a, in this particular box a 1 must go here or a 9 and a 1 or a 9 must go here. Now you see that there's another box here that has a 1 and a 6. But the logic I want you to understand is if a 1 and a 9 is the only two numbers that can go here and a 1 and a 9 is the only two numbers that can go there then we've used the 1 and the 9 up and there's no way a 1 could go here because the one, they, only a one and a nine can each appear once in a box. And in this box, of, in this box, one of these has to be one, one of these has to be nine. Therefore, the one and the nine will be played here, and you cannot have two ones in the same box. So therefore, this, even though it's a choice of a one or a six, we now know that you could erase the one, and the only le number left in there is a six. So we've actually, though we haven't been able to determine which one is 1 and 9, by looking at 1 and 9, we were able to actually determine that this was a 6. And that's important. Now let's look at this top box here. You have a 1, uh, you have an 8 and a 6, and an 8 and a 6, and then here a 1 and a 5, and a 1 and a 5. Though it doesn't tell us where these two numbers are going to go, we know that this 8 and 6 one of these will be 8 and one of these will be 6. And if you look at this column, the only two numbers are missing are an 8 and a 6, and they are going to go here. The same thing is true in this column, a 1 and a 5 and a 1 and a 5. We, we don't know which is which, but we know that that's the, the numbers that are going to need to go there. Now, this is the next strategy we're going to learn, which is here is the 8 and the 6, but, and even though we have an 8 and a 6 and 8 and a 6 in this column, if you also look across the top row, you have an 8 and a 6, and you have an 8 and a 6. Therefore, in this row, the only thing that can go here is an 8 and a 6, an 8 or a 6. Therefore, no other 8 and 6 can be in this row in any other spot. Well, if you look along the pencil marks here, you'll see that there's a 6 here. Well, that 6, we can remove the pencil mark of it because we now know that no 6 can go there. And by taking that 6 off, we now... Uh, know that no 6 can go there. Now here, let me click on the 6 again. Oops. Because now when I click on it and the pencil marks are shown in pink, you'll notice now there's only one spot in this entire box of 9 that that, that is 6 can go. By removing that pencil mark of the 6 here, we've actually now solved the 6 being right there. Oops. I'm sorry. Let's... So now we've done that. And now what's interesting is back here we had 8 and 6 and here and 6, but now that the 6 is here, we can now solve which of these is 8 and which of these is 6. The 6 has been removed here, thus that's an 8. And now this, the 8 was removed here, thus that's a 6. And by doing that, it solved this for us, which is an 8. So this allows you to do lots of things. In fact, look, at even here, it's removed the other number and allows you to know which is a 1. Uh, and but before I go ahead and fill that in, I want to start moving down to here, just to go back to that other logic, which is a 1 and a 4, and a 1 and a 4, and down here is a 1 and a 5. And so if we know a 1 and a 4 goes here, and we know a 1 and a 4 goes there, we know a 1 and 
we know that no 1 can be here. So we can remove that pencil mark of a 1, thus making a 5. And we can put in the 5 right here. Again, that 1 and a 5 removes other 5s in the row, column, or box, thus starting to give us more singletons, whoops, giving us more singletons of answers. Come on, computer. So now what it's done is it's by remo this 5, it's giving us this 1. So now we know that we can come here and we can put in a 1. And it starts to remove, uh, it starts to remove other things on the board. And this is how we're very slowly starting to solve it. As you can see here, it's created a singleton with the 1, and by doing that, it's opened up the 5. By opening up that 5, it opens up that 1. Very slowly, we're starting to open up the board. We now have a 4 and 5. It's, we've removed the pencil mark so that only a 4 can go there, and by doing that, look above it, it makes it so only a 5 can go there. And as, it, and we, as we slowly do it, we slowly start to remove the pencil marks. So that's this next basic strategy. In the next one, we're going to do a puzzle from top to bottom, and we're going to move into even more complex strategies. Stick around. It's going to get good.